as the Foundation 4 has been released. It includes new great features and some new modules as well. This is Javier Encinas and today we're going to discuss some of the features and benefits of this new version, ASDIP Foundation 4. Let's get started. When you open ASDIP Foundation, you see the Project Manager, which is this window over here. Here you can see the modules included in the package. In this case, is spread footings, strap footings, combined footings, wall footings, and pile cap design. Also, in the Project Manager, you can create calculations, you can copy the calculations that you just created, rename them, and delete them if you want. In addition, you can open your project, save your project, set the global units, and some preferences. Let's create a calculation for a spread footing. Just click on the button, assign the name of a calculation, any name, add it, and the name has been added to the tree. In the tree, you can see all the calculations that you create. Double click on the calculation that you just created, and this template opens. This is the spread footing template. Here there are some uh, default values that you can change uh, according to your particular model. Graphically, you see the footing. In the left pane, you enter the input information. Let's go to the loads tab. In this example, uh, let's say that we have uh, 100 kips and the column is eccentric. It's eccentric and you define the eccentricity here in the geometry, footing. Here are the dimensions of the footing. You can change uh, everything, of, of course. If you go to the column tab, offset. In this case, the column is offset 18 inches in each direction. For example, if we change that to 12, graphically you see immediately the change reflected there. Let's go back to 18 as it was. In the load tab, you can specify either a set of uh, load cases that the program internally combines according to the specified load combinations, or you can specify a set of pre-combined loads, loads that have been combined somewhere else, for example, in another software, and you have the reactions already combined. You just specify here those numbers in service uh, and factor loads. So the service loads are used for bearing calculations and the factor loads are used for the concrete design. In the materials tab, you define the uh, material properties for the footing, uh, F prime C, F Y, uh, allowable sovereign pressure and so on. And in the column, the column uh, concrete strength and uh, rebars and, and so on. In the reinforcement tab, there are multiple controls, options to optimize the rebars. Here you specify the top reinforcement or just bottom reinforcement. The program also allows you to define no rebars at all. So if the program uses the plain concrete strength in this case. The normal case is that you specify at least bottom reinforcement for normal, normal footings, unless, unless they are really small and uh, not important. In the column tab, you specify the rebars in the column. In the right pane, you, you see here the at a glance tab where uh, you see in just one screen a uh, summary of the results. You can see here immediately what, what is wrong and what is passing. For example, here I know that the bearing pressure is, is uh, over the allowable bearing. It's 3.4 versus 3. That's why I can see the, the red X here. So we can then go and change the dimensions if necessary to make it work. For example, if I go to to the geometry, I can go here to the footing and instead of eight, probably nine, and, and now, now that works. And now the footing looks like that. This area here means that uh, this is a, a partial bearing. Only the blue area is in contact with soil. If we go to the condensed tab, we can see a set of calculations in more detail grouped by topic. Here are the overturning calculations of the footing, uh, resisting calculations, and then the overturning safety factor. The one-way shear, the sliding calculations, and the corresponding controlling load combinations as well. The punching shear calculations, uplift calculations, here the transfer between the column and the footing. 
Here are the calculations of uh, the, the rebars in um, bending uh, for the top rebars, which in this, in this case we don't have, and the bottom rebars. So, and the program checks the ratio. If you go to the detail tab, you can see a set of calculations in much more detail with exposed formulas and references to the ACI code. So you can see step-by-step -step calculations similar to hand calculation style. You can check and follow everything that the program does internally. It's not a black box. Everything is exposed and everything is transparent in, in, in ASDIP Foundation. Graphically, the program shows the bearing, bearing uh, diagram in a plan view and in a section. If we go to the one-way shear tab, you can see two plan views, one for the one-way shear index X direction to the distance D from the column face in each direction. So this shaded area represents the bearing acting upwards and producing a shear. We go to the punching uh, tab, you can see the punching shear calculations. So it's a square around the column at a distance D over 2 from the column face. We go to the bending uh, tab, you can see the moments uh, that the bearing uh, diagram produces in, uh, in the footing to the face of the column. This is in the Z direction and this is in the X direction. We go to the column tab. The program generates the interaction diagram of uh, the column and uh, this point represents the loads. In this case, the point is inside the usable area, so the design is acceptable. We go to the construction tab. You can see a sketch, a uh, plan view and elevation view of the rebars that you just specified. So this is the contents report that as the foundation for generates. Let's go back to the project manager. If we create a calculation for the strap footing, let's see quickly what it does. Open the calculation. This is the template for the strap footing design. Here you specify the uh, geometry in these tabs, the geometry for the footings. In the strap beam tab, you specify the dimensions of the beam itself. And in the columns tab, you specify the dimensions of the two columns. If we go to the loads tab, it's similar to the previous module. You specify either a pre-combined set of loads or a nominal set of uh, load cases. In the reinforcement tab, there are multiple controls to optimize the rebars for the footings, for the strap beam, and for the columns. With this information, the program calculates the soldering pressures. The program checks the load transfer between the column and the footing, designs the strap beam. It calculates the shear for the exterior footing, one-way shear and the punching shear, and also designs the reverse inflection. If we go to the condensed tab, we have a set of more detailed calculations grouped by uh, topic and also by load combination. Here they design the strap beam, sliding calculations for the stability, the transfer between the column and the footing, in the detail tab, more calculations, step by step, sliding calculations, uplift, one way shear calculations with the corresponding controlling load combination. Graphically, you can see here the bearing stresses, the bearing pressures, and you can sort everything by load combination. If we go to the diagrams uh, tab, you see the shear diagram and the moment diagram for the uh, strap footing system. Also, you can sort by load combination. You go to the construction tab, there's a, a plan view and elevation view, four pages for the contents report. You see all the pages that are in, in the report. Go back to the project manager and open a calculation for the combined footing. Double click. And this is the template for the combined footing design. In the geometry tab, you enter the information for the footing. In the loads tab, you enter the loads as a pre-combined load or a set of uh, nominal load cases. The reinforcement, multiple uh, controls to optimize the rebars for the footing and uh, for the columns. In this case, you can see that everything is passing, so the design is acceptable. We go to the condensed tab. 
overturning calculations, the footing design, the exterior footing, this is the in interior footing, both in, uh, in shear, in punch in shear, and in flexure. Graphically, you can see here the bearing diagram. Uh, also, you can sort it by load combination. The program generates the uh, shear diagram and the moment diagram of the combined footing. Also, you can sort by load combination. And finally, in the construction tab, the program generates a sketch, plan view and uh, elevation view of the combined footing showing the rebars that you just designed. High quality report. If we go back to the project manager, let's create a calculation for a wall footing. Let's assign a name. It's added to the tree, double click. And this is the template for the wall footing design. In the left pane, you enter the geometry information for the wall and for the footing, the loads, as explained before, in materials, the properties for the footing and for the wall. And in the reinforcement tab, there are controls to optimize the rebars. At a glance, with a summary of the uh, results, everything here is passing. In the condensed tab, you see the condensed calculations grouped by topic. In the detailed tab, you see the detailed set of calculations step by step. And finally, graphically, you see the soil bearing pressures plan view and elevation view. Also, you can sort by load combination, or you can just click on controlling and the program finds the controlling load combination. In the shear tab, if the shears are at a distance D from the wall face, also sorted by load combination. Bending, the moments at the wall face, sorted by load combinations, and finally, in the construction uh, tab, you see a plan view and section view of the wall footing with the wall. The load combinations can be per as a 7, 10, 16, or as a 7, 0, 5, or uh, user defined, which is a custom load combination. You can enter here the load factors, and the program will use whatever factors are entered here in the calculations. That applies to all modules in this in this version. Let's go back to the project manager and let's create a calculation for pile cap. Create a calculation, double click. And the program opens here. This is the template for the pile cap design. So it's a new module in this version. In the left pane, you enter the geometry uh, information for the for the piles. The piles can be from four to 20 piles. Graphically, you, you see here the pile cap. So when we change the number of piles, for example, we select 10 piles, looks like that, 10 piles. Or if we select, for example, six piles, will look like that. In this case, we are using 16. You enter here the pile uh, edge distance and the pile spacing. Uh, the pile type, if it's round, square, or HP in steel, the pile size, the pile top embedment, and here you specify the batter piles. When you have lateral loads, you may need batter piles to increase the lateral capacity. The pile cap dimensions, length and width, the overall dimensions, are calculated as a result of the pile layout, is standard, and uh, based on the dimensions that you specify in the previous uh, tab. The column can be offset, for example, 12 inches, and the column immediately moves graphically, graphically there. And of course, all the calculations are updated accordingly. Go to loads. Here also you specify either a pre-combined set of loads or a set of nominal uh, load cases. In the materials tab, uh, here you enter the capacities for the piles in compression, tension, and lateral. This information is usually provided in the soils report. In the reinforcement tab, we have a pile cap tab with controls to optimize the rebars. At a glance, we can see in a single screen the most important results. In this case, everything is, is passing. Well, here we have an X, a red X, meaning that the minimum bottom steel area ratio is more than 1.0. 
If we go to the condensed tab, we can see the calculations in more detail. We go to the detail tab, we have the pile reactions, the one-way shear calculations for every single uh, lift state, the bending calculations, the punching shear calculations with the corresponding controlling load combination. Graphically, in the pile reactions tab, you see the actual uh, loads in every pile. You can sort this by load combination. If we go to the one-way shear, uh, we can see the, the shear at a distance d. You know, this is the, the tab at a distance d from the column phase in the x direction, at a distance d from the column phase in the z direction. In this tab is the one-way shear, but at the column phase in the x direction and in the z direction. It's a special uh, calculation, a special check that the program does. In the punching uh, tab, you see the regular uh, punching shear checking at a distance d over 2 from the column phase all around, and a special checking for the uh, punching shear at the column phase. In the bending uh, tab, you see the moments at a column phase in the moments are around z and moments around x. In the construction tab, you see the sketches generated by ASDIP Foundation in plan view with the rebars and in elevation view as well. We have five pages. This is the condensed report, high quality with all the images. Well, with this, we complete uh, this uh, overview of uh, the new ASDIP Foundation 4. This is a very good version. It has some really useful features and two new modules. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you very much for your attention.